Hey everyone, thanks for tuning into D News Plus today. I am Trace, and this is our first in a series about tobacco, episode one of five. Now, before you tune out, this isn't going to be about health effects of smoking. It's not going to be about cancer, emphysema, or all of the different things that smoking can cause. We're not talking about that. We all know all those things. If you've been around for the last 35, 40 years, you probably have been inundated with millions of dollars of advertising on both sides, lots of research, and all of that. We're going to take a whole other path and follow tobacco, just tobacco, the plant and how it got to be such a big deal. Make sure you subscribe so you get all five of the episodes here. You could also check us out on iTunes if you want an audio version of this podcast. We're gonna go through where this stuff came from, what it does to you, and not like the cancer stuff that you know already. What has been added to cigarettes over the years, what kind of chemicals and things, and also the psychology of smoking in general, and what some say the future of smoking is, vaping, of course. We're gonna talk about all this and much more, so let's kick into it. You've all probably heard about smoking and cigarettes, right? You know, what they do for you, what they're bad for you, they're good for you, the chemicals, they're addicting, and so on and so forth. I'm not minimizing that, that is all very important. You can find that on any health website. But I wanna talk about tobacco. And it's not just some innocent plant that evil corporations add rat poison to or whatever. It's much more complicated than that. This is a naturally occurring plant product. We're gonna go through a DNews Plus first here and we're gonna talk about botany. Nicotania tobaccum is the Latin name of tobacco. It belongs to the Solanaceae plant family, which has also got nightshade, potato, eggplant, tomato, some peppers, belladonna, also known as deadly nightshade, it's poisonous. All of these things are in the same family of plants with tobacco. And with all that food relation, you know, potatoes and tomatoes and eggplants, they all have fruits. So does tobacco have a fruit? It does, it does have a fruit. We actually couldn't find too much info on tobacco fruit. The fruit probably don't taste good. That's why we don't grow them and eat them. But if you've, you know, eaten tobacco fruit, let us know in the comments and if you've got tobacco seeds and you've seen those, let us know too. And of course, tomatoes and eggplants and all of those things are related, so they have some of the same things in them like nicotine. Tomatoes and eggplants, just a little bit insignificant amount of nicotine in there. So how did tobacco get the nicotine? Evolution. Nicotine is a liquid alkaloid. Alkaloids are naturally occurring nitrogen chemical compounds. A caffeine is an alkaloid as well. Nicotine is made in the roots of the tobacco plant and then it's transported through the xylem to the plant's leaves. That's where the nicotine is mainly found. That's why we burn those leaves when we smoke them. But they didn't do that so that we would burn them and smoke them. You know, it wasn't like tobacco wanted to be cut down and burned up. Instead, many scientists believe that the nicotine got into the leaves because nicotine is toxic. Nicotine was their defense mechanism against leaf-eating pests. It will kill small insects, but not all small insects, which is a little confusing to scientists, like the tobacco hornworm, which is at the larva stage of the Manduca sexta moth. And not only can it eat tobacco leaves and lives, once it's ingested the tobacco leaves, it uses the nicotine in the leaves in a process called defensive halitosis and kind of like releases it through its skin. It exhales it and, you know, uses it as his own protection from predators. But it does kill some insects that try and eat the plant. So that's why they think that's probably why it had it. Tobacco plants have been used as a natural pesticide for years. They call it tobacco water. It's kind of like a tea. You steep the leaves in hot water and then you spray it on the plants and it keeps other insects from moving in. It's effective against pests because nicotine affects the nerves of the insects. It's basically poisoning the nervous system. When humans ingest it, it does the same thing, but we're a lot bigger. The amount the insects ingest would kill them because they're tiny. Because we're so big, it just kind of messes with our bodies. So not unlike alcohol and other things, you know, we ingest small amounts and then it somewhat poisons us and we get a reaction and it makes us somehow enjoy it. I'm not really sure. So what happens when we ingest nicotine? Well, nicotine is classified as a stimulant, and like insects, it affects our nervous system. So when we ingest it, it releases epinephrine, which is the fight or flight hormone. That increases our heart rate, it makes our blood pressure go up, it makes us breathe more rapidly. We feel real good, but 
over time, if you do this a lot, you're kind of hacking your body and it can lead to hypertension and heart disease. So once you've ingested it, the nicotine goes into your bloodstream and it is delivered inevitably to your brain where it latches onto receptors called nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. There it releases dopamine, a chemical that makes us feel good. It also releases something called acetylcholine, which increases your energy and makes you think more clearly. And another neurotransmitter called glutamate, which is associated with learning and memory, and it improves your mood. But it might be less a thing about stimulating your brain and more a thing about the withdrawal from not having that. Because essentially, like I mentioned just a minute ago, it's sort of like hacking your body. You're telling your body, fight or flight, do all of these different things, improve my mood, make my thinking clearer, because something serious is about to happen, and then nothing serious happens. So you go through withdrawal when that nicotine wears off. Then you want more nicotine. The stimulant is the side of nicotine that helps you become addicted, but there's also the sedative side of nicotine where it relaxes you. But it may all be in your head because it may be that you just want more nicotine to get those effects. So all of this, of course, does make it addictive, but it makes you feel really good by triggering parts of your brain that makes you feel good, and it does this very efficiently. When you smoke a cigarette, the nicotine is delivered to your brain in just a few seconds. And it's a little longer for nicotine gums or for dips because it has to go through a different process, but basically, smoking makes you feel good makes you want to do it more. I'm not endorsing it, I'm just saying that's what it literally does to your body. You feel bad when you're not smoking. That's the withdrawal you get from not having the nicotine in your brain. So you smoke to feel good, that's the addicting part. But really you are kind of addicted to just not feeling bad anymore. I'm not gonna bore you with what you already know, however. You know, smoking's bad for you, it kills you. It causes cancer, diabetes, and all sorts of other things. We're gonna do the other way. Is there anything good about tobacco? That's what we asked ourselves, and we found a really interesting study from Australia that has a link between those who ingest nicotine and people who have a lack of knee and joint replacements, because nicotine may help prevent cartilage deterioration, which is weird. Interesting, right? Some studies say that nicotine may help treat ADHD, prevent Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, and although none of these studies have been repeated over lots of times, there is this thing called a tobacco smoke enema that you've probably heard about, where they literally blew smoke up your ass through a tube, usually after you drowned, it's gross. Basically, the crux of this tobacco plant is that the leaves contain a lot of nicotine. It was a natural defense mechanism and it created it naturally and when you ingest it, it makes you feel good unless you're a tiny bug and then it's gonna kill you. If you're a big human and you ingest enough of it, it will also kill you, just in case you're wondering. It's not that easy though. It would take a lot of nicotine to accidentally overdose on it, but you can overdose on nicotine. And because it makes you feel good though, it's addicting. So it's no surprise that the tobacco plant has a long history and it spans ancient civilizations and wars and the beginnings of whole new fields of research and study, which we're gonna get into throughout this series. So please subscribe so you get all of the episodes in this, but that is where the tobacco plant comes from. What about how it spread around the world? That's what we're gonna talk about tomorrow. Let us know down in the comments what you think about stuff like this. Have you ever thought about the tobacco plant as a plant and like thought about it in this way? So cool, right? Thanks for watching, everybody. Come find me on Twitter. I'm at Trace Dominguez. See you next time on D News Plus.